morning, we're in Baja. Welcome to CCTV. And what I'm going to show you today and let you hear is uh, Paul Begley and Mike from around the world. I think it was February 2nd or 3rd. That video got taken down, so I, I grabbed the uh, narration. I'm going to put it on this video. Uh, you're in Baja, sir, or Cabo San Lucas. Uh, you know, all these places are within 5, 10, 15, 20 miles away from each other. So it's all the same area, Mazatlan, uh, Baja, Sur, uh, and Cabo San Lucas, all that is all together in one area. So we're going to be looking at the skies. Time is at hand, folks. You see what's going on on TV? Um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only one that can heal you of what's going on here, you know, if you get it. And, uh, you know, the government could do some, but God could do a lot more. So trust in the Lord right now. It's under strange times we're living in. These are strange skies. I picked this up on the 15th. And all I did was make it into a super slow-mo video. They had so many clips missing. There was lots of stuff going on. I know they had two big planets coming in. I'll show you that uh, from another camera the next day what actually came through. So you're missing footage from 1030 to... 5.30. So what happened in, what, seven hours? No, five hours. Keep watching. So what I did, folks, was I downloaded uh, Paul Begley and Mike from around the world on 2.29. Douglas told me about it. The next day, it was gone. Now... One of the things they're doing out there is when you go to a video, Planet X, whatever, and you open the page and it says ERA with a bunch of numbers, that's, I believe what they're doing is trying to get you not to watch that video. They're handpicking who watches what Planet X videos and what. So just refresh your page up to three times and that video will start. It's not taken down. It's not having an ERA. It don't want to show you. But if you're persistent, you could watch anything that does that to you. On my channel, same thing. So, with no further ado, here's Paul Begley. Guys, enjoy this and stay for the whole thing. It's it's long, but stay for the whole thing, all right? I appreciate your uh, support and your love here. God bless. Here we go. Oh, where could he be? Uh, we're waiting for Mike around the world. You can call any time, Mike, wherever you are. Um... But certainly the coronavirus is a concern, but these explosions out deep in the universe, what does this mean? What is planet X, Nibiru? What is the, uh, what is the effects on the Earth? How about 5G? Should we be concerned about 5G? Should we be concerned about CERN? Should we be concerned about these fireballs and asteroids, meteorites, earthquakes? We'll check it as we're waiting on Mike around the world, earthquakes around the world. Here's what's been going on as we wait for Mike. There's been 61 earthquakes around the globe. And matter of fact, speaking of Mike around the world, we did have a 5.3 in the southern uh, area there. Mike from around the world, are you there? Pastor Paul, this is me. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great tonight. I really am feeling great. The crowd is gathering in, and I hope you're doing good tonight. I'm good to go. Good to go for tonight. I'm glad I dialed the right number. Yeah, don't be don't be losing the numbers now, Mike. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, Mike. We got a great show lined up here tonight. People have been asked. We've been getting emails all week since you were here last week. Um, and we'll, we'll get to the we'll get your answers in a minute. Why did he say? Did he actually say 750,000 troops are gathering in the Middle East? And also, some people said they they thought you said start getting shelters ready. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember that, but maybe I missed that. Uh, but let me let's go straight to this question, Mike. Uh, astronomers tonight have detected the biggest explosion in the history of the universe. Uh, some. 400 million light years away, they have detected the largest explosion that the universe has ever seen, ever been recorded. It's as big as the Big Bang itself. 
and the and they said it's sending five times more energy toward us than ever recorded in history. Mike, what is this? Is this is this alpha and omega? Is this the beginning and the end? I mean, tell me what what what, what is your take on this? Well, Pastor Paul, that's a, that happened a long time ago, <clears throat> right? Yep. I want you to think about something. That big of an explosion happening so, so many years ago, it would have caused other explosions, correct? Yes. Okay. So upon detection of a main explosion, a, a, a main output like this, you know it, 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 it resulted in a cascading effect. If it was detected, right? Yeah. Which it was. Um, then we have other explosions to be detected from this, from that time forward, from this time forward. We have to deal with some of the cascading effects that happened many, 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 many eons ago. And uh, these are back-to-back -back troubles. Imagine this, Pastor. Well, imagine that we had the effects of something so violent that happened so long ago, but it was just now reaching us. Right. Yes. But what we didn't know, what the average person wouldn't think of, is that that one explosion caused other massive explosions. It destabilized things. So the forces of that happening so long ago were just now seen. But it's almost like a blast wave, right? Like you see the flash of a big explosion, and then you have to deal with concussion, right? The concussion blast. And then you have to deal with whatever comes after that. So this is one of those scenarios. Um, um, oh, that one, a gate. We'll say this one is a gate because what this does is it opens the doors to many other phenomena that will absolutely affect the Earth. So, does the, uh, so when we start talking about the five waves of energy, or we start talking about, let's say, Nibiru or Planet X, are they already some of the byproducts of these massive, this massive explosion that happened? I mean, it, I mean, this is shaking everything up. Is that right? Now you have you have stationary objects, well, some are stationary, um, of 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 uh, large scaled explosions, supernova bursting, and everything else. It happened a long time ago. We're just now seeing the effect, kind of like that magnetar I referred to back in 2014. Um, that happened in 2003. So, with these explosions that happened a long time ago, right? It caused a, a type of chaos type of violence. We're just now seeing the effect. The part that gets me is this, right? Hear me on this because this is a very important topic. Here's why. These these explosions that happened pri prior to oh man, it just, it just happened so long ago it's hard to think back that long, but they happened prior to us being born. Okay? Prior to us being born they happened um, because of their distance. So they were already in motion. Right. It caused other problems, kind of like in a cluster. Um, now, this 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 these this violence that's reaching us, this is only the onset uh, uh, detected onset of many more things that have exploded as a result of this. That was a very violent time. Um, some of these when it comes to the waves, some of the preceding waves were from stationary objects, but they came from the same, uh, let's just say the same point of origin that uh, you have other movement in right now. So imagine this explosion, it happened a long time ago, let's say it set off 15 million other explosions, okay, except these explosions, right, yeah. travel faster than that major explosion. Right. These set off things closer to us. Oh, I see. So that means they're going to start reaching us kind of like at the same same time here. See, with a, with a um, going back to a magnetar explosion that cut off part of our atmosphere, it happened so long ago from a one inch by one inch uh, shift of a magnetar, that's, and, and it caused that explosion a long time ago. Um, it hit our atmosphere and it did some damage. These explosions that are taking place, this is by no means isolated. You're talking about thousands of explosions. 
scientists so, are about to have a headache in detection of a cluster of things going off. So, right? so what, what's, what you're saying is even though these uh, explosions are uh, way out there, millions of light years away, the, the, the impact has hit other stationary objects, planets, comets, asteroids, and sent them racing toward us at a faster speed than the original explosion. And it also destabilized things that were already about to blow up, uh, like, uh, for example, a magnetar. When a, when a star reaches that stage to get to a magnetar, uh, any, any force that comes upon any magnetars out there of that magnitude could destabilize that magnetar. And that is a scientist's worst nightmare, right? Yeah. Because if it hits the Earth, that can end us. Okay, that can really end us. And there are lots of magnetars out there that can end us. And so here's what I'm saying. This, these detections, this, this, a big anomaly like that is going to have secondary anomalies. It's going to have thousands of secondary anomalies, right? Yes. Um, and we're right in the middle of it because these are radial explosions. We're right in the middle of it. So you could say this is somebody who opened, this is a gate opener. Now from that gate is going to come many more things. Right, if we've been we've been blessed up, you know, we've been blessed a long time. Right, but now we're entering into a very violent time uh, in space. But it happened a long time ago, and and you know what? Um, I get ramped up in this idea because God knew He knows His own creation. Right, and so when He gives us prophecy, you know, He's not warning us just to, get, to so we can remember His name or something. He's telling us something here. He's telling us these things are in motion, and they're going to reach you because they happened prior to any of this being here in the first place. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine these things that have happened prior? Let's say it happened prior to the earth being made. Right. So God makes the earth anyway, but these things are still coming. He set a designated time on this earth, right? And it's not like we haven't had a chance to read the Bible. We've had a chance to read the whole thing. And so we, we've had a lifetime to get our stuff together. So these things are now reaching us. He already told us time is going to, run out he already told us he it's in the us. bible mike like you're saying in luke 21 when jesus was asked the question about all the things going to happen we know about the wars rumors of wars and earthquakes which is huge but when he says nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilences plagues diseases and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven so it's just going to get more intense isn't it mike god knew god as you said god exploded and stuff was heading in this direction before he ever formed the earth yet he went ahead and formed the earth anyway and gave us a prophetic roadmap to follow that would help us know we're going to be nearing the end times by simply just looking up in the heavens the heavens are going to be shaken the earth's going to be quaking the devil's back is breaking mike i mean it's coming to an end isn't it it is. And all these things, you know, these things are going to continue to increase in a magnitude that none of us are used to. I'm not used to a magnitude that, um, you know, I have a, I, I've, I've seen a couple things in my lifetime. And I'm by no means, I, I've not seen anything in the magnitude of what, um, what's being described. The, the data that's coming back right now is, is um, there are no numbers that big. You know, binary representation is not doing it justice. Hexadecimal won't do it. The numbers are too big. These things are too massive, right? They're almost outside of your comprehension. But we're certainly going to entertain many, many things. This is a gate opener. You know, events like these, this is a gate opener. So imagine this one explosion. What happens within another week and we get about 50 more just to start detecting weird things or bring it closer to home what if it looks like half of the heavens half of space is normally black has changed colors but in fact what it is is a bunch of radioactive material passing um, from one side of us going to a you know somewhere out there in space but then it increases and what happens when debris actually starts to reach certain areas and that 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 influx increases you know the Lord, he told us, he, he warned us, he told us, he told many generations, and, and he said these things were coming. Didn't he say in the book of Jeremiah, the destroyer of the Gentiles is on its way? Yes. So that was back then, and it's on its way. A, a person like me, I think in long durational periods, and um, these things have been set in motion, and we were, you know, we've been duly 
informed many times. You know, thank God for folks like yourself who 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 labor to uh, also do your due diligence to get this out there to folks. Hopefully they take heed to it, but I think now they're going to have no choice. Mike, you've been telling us for a time. Folks, this is Mike from around the world from Council of Time. Mike from around the world with us tonight. He's also going to be speaking at our Mega Quake conference coming up in Indianapolis, Indiana, May 1st and 2nd. He won't be there in person, but he'll be there by, uh, by telephone addressing the 500 people that will be jammed in that auditorium. He'll tell some things and share some things in that that he has probably never shared on the air before, and I think that's that's really good. We need to know. Mike, you kind of mentioned about people should start getting shelters ready. Uh, that May 12th date, that doomsday date, and I don't want to say it's doomsday, but it's certainly it's a day that you call it, it will be a telling date. Is there anything you could share with us tonight? Is there any indications in intelligence things you see that you can be, you know, without breaking the classification? Of course, the classified you can't do. But is there something you can share with us tonight about this upcoming period between now and May 12th? Well, some of the acts, some of the uh, uh, some of the phenomena in the earth, um, they will. We're, we're looking for a, a severe increase in uh, Earth's activity. You know, as, as the heavens are destabilized or forces come against us, and they're coming in past the heliosphere into our solar system, it's going to vibrate this planet. Uh, what? Continuous vib it's going to continually vibrate this planet. That will cause crustal destabilization. That will also uh, shift um, several different uh, patterns as far as solar patterns and everything else. Our sun will also be affected. Uh, as this energy is inbound, as things are inbound, as changes take effect, our sun is going to be greatly affected. In fact, um, just to line up this scenario for you, I know a lot of people, they look for external objects to come in and do damage to the earth. Well, that, that's, that's, um, that's not a bad thing to do given the time that we live in however uh it's always good to be mindful that radiation affects the sun the sun is closer to us than anything else and the sun already sends out a stream of radiation towards us so what happens when the sun is supercharged what happens when the sun's radiation doubles what, what happens when the chemistry in the sun is absolutely different than what it was 20 years ago and now it's burning different with a flashpoint right uh as far as the sun's reaction um and how it's maintaining that reaction if certain particles are introduced into the sun it could it could it could absolutely in about a 24 hour period cause the sun to put out some type of a hyper um well let's just say greatly increased radiation greatly increased heat the infrared spectrum would be off the scales that means you couldn't you know at that point i don't think it'd be safe for anybody to be caught in the sunlight um on a clear day because you have infrared can really do you damage microwave radiation would be off the scales x-rays would be off the scales so that the sun is one of those uh, indicators that lets us know are we receiving a massive uh, influx of radiation right because it's going to react it will react the color will change if it changes for a couple of hours it's 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 you know it's it's going to have a physical effect upon us now the surface of the earth um probably won't be so good in certain areas not everywhere but in certain areas here's why the same way you put microwave into an, or you put a, something with water molecules in the microwave, and that water starts to boil, that that the oxygen or the uh, water molecules begin to vibrate faster and faster yeah. through microwaves. The sun can cause the exact same effect. In fact, without our atmosphere, none of us could go out in the sun. All of us would be just like uh, a piece of chicken in a microwave, no. or, or whatever it is no. in a microwave. Uh, so, with our atmosphere right with our atmosphere taking on greater and greater densities of particles in the ionosphere through a what i call a compression event we're going to have leakage let's just say we're going to have parts of the atmosphere that are 
a little too compressed. And so you're going to have penetration of microwaves, right? Microwaves are very short beams, and, but our atmosphere protects us from most, uh, just about all the harmful things that can kill us. So we can look up in the sky and everything's okay. But our atmosphere is going to take a hit. With this influx of radiation, the atmosphere will be directly affected. People should be able to see this by some of the weather patterns and phenomena. And if they go back, uh, since they started recording weather, you're going to see um, it used to be cyclical. In other words, some of the weather phenomenon we used to get was expected, but the increases in the weather that we've had thus far are off the charts. Um, they, we just never had this before. Some of the extremes between hot and cold off the charts. Um, much of the um, most of the ice in the in the poles are gone. Do you know that? Uh, and. Uh, once all that's gone, that will trigger another effect, kind of like a match actually being struck against something. So okay, we I might. will have... Uh, yeah. Just one question. Don't, don't lose your thought about the match striking. But Revelation chapter 16, okay, tells us that the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So, so the, do we, maybe they just witnessed the vial being poured out in the heavens that are headed in this direction, uh, but what you're saying is there's already enough stuff happening right now here in the next six months or so. The sun could be affected to the point that we could have some kind of mega solar flare that could brighten the sun for maybe an hour or two that would literally scorch people or burn people heavily from UV rays or radiation coming from off the sun, even so only for a short period of time, for a couple hours. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, it can, in fact, it can have a red, a very red hue to it. In other words, you could look up in the sky and see the sun would look red. Like on a clear day, instead of that bright, you know, unbearable color that it is now, uh, it would be red. Now, if you ever see it red like that, that that's that's pure infrared. Uh, that, that's in the spectrum that can really burn people up. That red color means, um, because red is, a, is the, it travels the shortest distance also, uh, the red spectrum does. So that would be directly, that would correlate to microwaves reaching uh, our upper atmosphere, I mean, with an intensity well, that we couldn't, we couldn't, the earth would be overwhelmed. Um, at that point, it would trigger auroras. Now, it could only happen for a couple of hours, but I, I'll tell you this. In a couple of hours, the surface temperature in certain areas on the ground could reach two, three, four hundred degrees. Whoa! In a split second. Uh, that's very, that, that could be, that's easy, easily done, and it's happened before, but not on a large scale. You see, the, we had problems in the atmosphere during the ozone days, right? The ozone had holes in it, and they kept talking about the holes, but in certain areas where the atmosphere became thin, uh, our atmosphere was rebounding from several events that happened in the cosmos, and as it did that, certain areas of the Earth became extremely hot, so hot that they let no one into those areas due to death. Uh, the ground temperatures there, as soon as the sun rose, in about probably about a minute, minute and a half to two minutes, the ground temperature was past 300 degrees. It was to the point it killed everything. I mean, almost instantly. And, um, and that was in the polar regions. So you can imagine what would happen if the Earth suffered uh, a bit of compression to the atmosphere and the sun uh, had its reaction what would happen if that hit a major city, if that hit, you know, a large area in any, on any continent, these things we're facing. And that could happen uh, with, with, you wouldn't believe the minimal amount of radiation. If we had an influx that came in a little more than what we've been getting, that could absolutely change the sun tonight. Okay. So, so my is it, it's one of those what you said something to look for the sun i expect some reactions with the sun kind of like when uh, that solar flare went off out of the blue and no one really expected that well it was expected because of inbound pulses and that was due to an influx of radiation it affects the sun every single time the sun will be supercharged and then regulate itself blowing out all that uh, energy expelling all that energy but uh things like that we can expect so imagine a time where you have solar flares solar flares 
has become common and everybody becomes frightened because they don't know what direction they're going to go. So you're looking at a time where we have back-to-back problems that won't give us relief, right? They just won't. A uh, couple of those things and then we have a severe drought problem. All the ground is messed up and the um, you know radiation in the animals and us increases. But viruses are seven, what is it, 700 times more potent in the presence of radiation. So we have another problem. As radiation increases on the earth, it is going to be directly proportional to the lethality of these viruses. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. So are you, what? I mean, are you saying, Mike, that uh, like coronavirus and other viruses uh, that the intensity of the radiation levels, and oh, by the way, Guys, this is, this is not junk science. Our radiation levels on the Earth is right now 20% higher than it was four years ago. 20% higher. And Mike told us about this about six years ago. He said, oh, by the way, you're going to see radiation levels spiking on the Earth. Like how he makes these statements now. He's like, oh, by the way. Well, oh, by the way, it's here, Mike. It's 20% higher on the planet. And Mike, can we just throw out a question? Viruses are going to get in the earth. The sun's going to be, we're, the flares going to be uh, normal. What about 5G, Mike? I mean, what, do we need to add that to the situation? It, what, is, is, are we going to be like people walking around inside microwaves? What does 5G mean? Have they tested it and what its effects are in the human body? I mean, I, I, what's your I understanding? Yes, uh, fifth generation. Something, something, you know, wow, I can't believe you brought that up anyway. <clears throat> Wireless devices operate at, normally they operate at uh, um, in the 2.4 gigahertz range. Well, so does your human body and your neurological system, just in case you didn't know that. So the number printed on your router, right? That anywhere you see that 2.4, uh, whatever it says, gigahertz, yeah. is the same frequency in which your neurons, right? They communicate with each other. They fire, and then that information is interpreted um, with your brain. So your wireless networks are tuned uh, to the human body. Do you think that's by accident? No, I think that was purposely done just so that it would work uh, incompatible, so we'd be compatible with our computers. Well, yeah, there, 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 there is something going on with uh, wireless communication, but 5G stands for fifth generation. And so that is, our, that is the last attempt to get a much higher uh, rate of data to flow through various means, uh, through everything, really. Is it hard to... earlier generations of, uh, of uh, communication basketball was just through a certain band of frequencies. Then they increased it, and so it operated through greater and greater frequencies. So instead of uh, taking up half the radio stations, it took up all the radio stations. Now we have 5G, which takes up so many bands, it's incredible, but that's designed for machine-to-machine -machine communication. Right, which has to be almost instantaneously all the time because 5G, although they have stationary uh, points, right, 5G can easily be expanded by anybody, right, with a with a uh, transponder, well, 5G transponder. So our air traffic, right, uh, any satellite up there, any aircraft, any car, whatever you name it, it can be expanded instantly, right? It can be added to the network and then taken off and another one can be added on. Thus, everything becomes um, connected, but everything also expands the communication. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So it does. Every device that's in the earth that uses 5G also becomes a part of that network to expand somebody else's speed. So you're looking at something that is incredibly complex. The machine, the machines behind 5G that allow it to work, work by artificial intelligence, by self-adjusting reprogrammable computers that are learning machines. You know, the same machines that are making these biological uh, program biological cells. Yeah, those machines. So, um, yeah, we're into a very fast-paced time right now. Okay, uh, it, it's an, a complex connection of web of machines feeding off machines, feeding machines. But we as humans are caught in the middle of this web. I mean, we're like 
uh, insects in a web, I think. I, I'm not sure how that's going to affect us, and I don't think anybody knows. But it is a very complexity thing that we're going to continue to watch. Mike, uh, also, uh, let's talk about coronavirus. People are very worried. We're also going to talk about these 750,000 troops that are converging. We've seen where they opened up a base in Georgia. Uh, excuse, excuse me. We reopened up a base in Saudi Arabia that we hadn't been in in 17 years. And we've got F-22 and F-15 fighter jets and thousands of troops that are just moving in with Patriot missiles to deter Iran. Is this part of that? We'll ask you that in a minute. But first... First, okay. coronavirus, coronavirus, Mike. The numbers are exploding in Italy. They're exploding in South Korea, Iran. Those three countries are really taking off. Can you tell us any latest info or, or intel that you can share about the coronavirus? Well, now, the coronavirus is... It, it is a known virus unless it's a... It's a uh, Let's just say enhanced. Um, well, wait, wait, before you say enhanced, just be let's be clear that Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas wants somebody. He's screaming, he's standing on top of the desk in in, in uh, Congress, and he's demanding the Senate and that the White House or somebody get China to prove did they create a bioweapon or an enhanced virus. And he's asking the question. I don't know. But let's go with what you continue. Well, because China will often, uh, China and South Korea, or, or China, not South Korea, I'm sorry, China and uh, North Korea are leaders in chemical agents and biological studies. Okay, so they mess around with in bio labs all the time. Unless this virus is this virus, there could be a mutated strand out there. There could there could be a uh, an enhanced version of it. But for the most part, this virus, what makes it so dangerous, uh, why it's spreading so fast, is because no one has a natural immunity to it. Right? The reason they have no natural immunity to it is because it's not been introduced into the human population like it has. Okay, so when something has not been in a human host, it's going to thrive. And nothing, uh, our parents didn't have it, our parents' parents didn't have it, so we have no natural immunity to it. And normally what happens when a virus comes into the body, the body reacts by attempting to destroy not only it, but every other cell. But of course, the virus is hijacking everything, stealing materials, and it's after the DNA of a, of a uh, healthy cell. That's, that's what it's after. It uses that DNA, and it, then it replicates itself. So it can't just replicate itself without stealing material from the human body. So that's what it's after. Well, while it's doing that, the body is trying to shut it down. The body's trying to um, fight it off and everything else. The body's also finding a very special special cell, very special instructions, right? There, it, the body goes through an archive of DNA to try and find a very specialized cell that can fight this virus. Um, when, it, when you're having a fever and um, all these other symptoms that go with it, that's what your body is doing. Once it finds that specialized cell, once it digs up the DNA, because it has to go through a lot of DNA, it then takes that DNA, it carries it to a nuclei of a couple of cells, they create this specialized cell. And then they send a few of them out. They see the response. Did it work or not? If it did, they replicate by the trillions. And they'll go and destroy, target just that virus. Uh, before it does this, though, it destroys everything. Your white blood cells start destroying everything. Um, your immune system is off the scales. The problem is, because we've not encountered this virus before, uh, the, the natural process of the body trying to find that DNA, it takes a long time. It's going to have to hunt, 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 hunt. It's there somewhere. Everything in creation is bound within the DNA of a human being. I don't know why they won't tell people this, but anyway, um, it, it's just going to take a long time for it to find it. Now, this virus has RNA carriers. That's where we're going to be in trouble. Because what it can do is take our DNA and rewrite it and send it back into a cell under the guise of a healthy cell because it will chemically disguise itself, infiltrate the body, right? Its whole purpose is to infiltrate the body, but it will start changing things, right? Yeah. Um, but we've not been introduced into this virus, you know, no time, you know, in the in the modern day time. So it does, is is doing damage and it's spreading. Now, what should be curious is they're finally beginning to admit, your, your listeners already heard this story, but they're finally admitting 
that the virus is popping up in places where nobody from China has been. The virus is popping up in places where it should not be. You know what that means? Yeah. Take the number they're giving you and multiply that by 100, and that's probably the real number. That's That comes from a statistical formula, which means when you have folks with an... Uh, that are in an area, but that area has not been exposed. Well, here, here's what. Okay, Mike, you still there? Okay, hang on, everybody. Mike, Mike. Of what's out there. Okay. And what's out there, the larger amount of what's out there is just not yet known. Okay, as Mike, as Mike, Mike, known, Mike, I'm sorry. Surprising. Mike, I'm sorry. When you were speaking, a very important point you just made, it just went silent and we didn't get to hear it. Could you, could you try it again? Okay, the, did you get the multiply by 100? We knew that, and you said, but when it's in an area that has never been exposed. Okay, an area that's never been exposed to the virus. Should that virus pop up in the area, what actually happened is this. The virus has reached that area through untrackable people. In other words, folks that nobody's tracking, they're not tracking their movements. Um, that normally constitutes a larger majority of those who are sick. So that's why I said multiply that number by 100, because that means the number of people that no one knows who are sick, right, outweigh those who are sick by a large margin. So the number is much higher than it is. It's just that these folks have not reported their symptoms to anybody. See, some people are able to handle the symptoms. So they go inside. They don't know what it is, whether it be coronavirus or cold, right? Or, I mean, uh, just a flu. They don't know. Um, I know the president said 69,000, but I shared 88,000. That's what the actual number is, 88,000. They, they're, they're trying to, you know, it's so funny because after we had our talk, if you go back and listen to the address at the printed side of it, you will hear some of the numbers and some of the same things we talked about right here on the show. I know. Anyway, they're, 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 but they have to ease the markets. I can understand that because everybody's going to panic over a virus like this, especially when they say nobody has a cure for it or anything. So that's totally understandable, right? Um, anyway, the number of those who have the virus that are not being tracked probably are in some very high numbers. You have to think about something. Uh, in this country, in America, just talking about America, we have classes of people. We have high class, middle class, and low class, and then we have the super, super poor, right? What happens if the super, super poor get the virus? Well, we know the habits of those who are in impoverished, right? They are supported by health and human resources. They take their children to the hospital because they have a medical card, so they don't have to worry about that. So if they got the virus, they're going to report it. The super poor are not going to report it. The middle class, if they get the virus, they have to pay money to go to a hospital. All of them do not have the money to go to a hospital. So that constitutes about 6% of the middle class right now. It's not going to go to the hospital. They're going to tough it out. By the time they tough it out, it will have spread all over the place. Right. So you're, you're really when you deal with the mathematics behind a viral outbreak, even in the simulations that are quite accurate, uh, the number of those who are affected is probably 100 times more than what they're what they're reporting. So it's, um, you know, it's one of those type situations. But thank God it's not absolutely lethal. Right? It's just not absolutely lethal. If a person has a compromised immune system, it's going to wreak havoc. Uh, if they don't, it's, it's, they're probably going to have some symptoms. And it will, you know, the symptoms will subside. Here's a problem, though. Now, I, I don't, I don't, um, I can verify part of this. Here it is. Because of our lack of um, materials internally in the body to deal with this virus, people are, re they're getting this virus again a week after they had it. Now, that's, that's uh, not good. It's not good. That means that the body is not retaining um, what it needs to fight off this virus, which means it's really rare to humanity, is what that means. Um, so these cases, now I can verify this by probably as a 6% verification that this has happened a few times already, that people have recaught this thing. It's not like the flu where you have it once and you're immune forever, uh, because the body has no real natural defense against it um the body retains the memory the defense memory against this thing just for a little while and then you can get it again that poses an issue that, that's, that that's poses all, a relation. And you know mike this is this is huge information you're saying because anything else generally 
once you have the measles, you're not catching it again. Once you've had the mumps, once you, if you've had smallpox or whatever, it's not coming back. Your body trains itself to protect you. But what you're saying is that the coronavirus, even if you was to get it and survive it, it could come back and you would get it again. You're saying we don't have... Get it again. The, have we ever heard of anything like that? Have, have we ever heard of anything like that before? Well, not, not really. I say that because, now again, this is about, I can maybe 60% verify that that's happening, okay? But the problem in, problem in that is, is that people can recontaminate other folks. So how long should the quarantine be to absolutely, you know, absolutely get rid of the virus? And what numbers does China really have? Because we know they're incinerating stuff over there. There's a big smoke plumes going all over the place. We don't know what's happening in China. You know, it's very important that we know the numbers in China. It's, it's extremely important. But now that we have Italy, right? We're going to have to know the numbers from Italy because they are matching what has happened in China. And Japan now is starting to take off. It is a ripple effect in, in, in Japan. But sad to say on the East Coast of America, it's starting to, it's starting to trickle out all over the place. CDC centers in, in the states that um, um, they're, they're, they're allocating funds and everything to the CDC to planning. They are enacting policy. Policy in states when they when they have a medical emergencies, that's for allocation of funding. Um, that's when they activate certain individuals, bring in specialists, and they coordinate. Um, that's what that's for. Uh, so don't let that fight you too much. The truth is we have a problem with the virus, and it would uh, it'd be helpful to people to know um, how much they touch their face. How you get a virus in the first place, you got to watch, you know, you got to watch certain things. You know, we have to raise our, uh, our cleanliness level a little bit and, and kind of be cautious out there, right? But, you know, I've been around, to be honest with you, I've been around, I, I get around people sometimes quite a bit. And um, I'm, I'm blessed. I really am blessed because I should have just about everything out there, but I don't. Um, so thank God for that. Well, I think now what we're doing is, uh, and we're going to go into the military side of this question, but this is why we keep saying to folks, you have to understand uh, Psalms 91, that you have a promise to protect you through Jesus Christ by uh, getting under the secret place, getting under the shadow of the Almighty. Read Psalms 91 and then know, know who you are in Christ Jesus and know that you can be blessed and highly favored. And I think that's what, Mike, is what you're saying. You're blessed and highly favored because you know who you are in Christ. You know what the blood of Christ can do, the name of Jesus. And this is why in the last days, Jesus told us this was all going to happen, not to give us fear, but to prepare us to walk in faith to be stronger in our faith in the end times than we would have uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago. I mean, we have to get stronger, folks. The heavens are shaking. The sun is changing. The meteorites say, look, we had a fireball over Phoenix last night just blowing through the sky and didn't even know it was coming. This is going to become an everyday occurrence. It already is, but people just don't know it. And uh, Mike is telling you we're going we're to see more and more and more of these w wild flares off the sun, asteroids, meteorites, incoming debris, I mean, this is why we're doing this conference, folks. Brock, tell people how to get to Megaquake 2020. Megaquake 2020, Indianapolis, Indiana, May 1st and 2nd. Get your tickets tonight, folks, before they're Mega gone. Megaquake 2020, Indianapolis, Indiana, May 1st and 2nd, the most anticipated conference of the year. We're going to be discussing Planet X, Nibiru, the pole shifts, the seas rising, the volcanoes, biblical signs from Revelation. We're bringing in the top minds, scientists, biblical scholars, astronomers, all of the people that will be talking about this. Don't miss this conference. I'll see you in Indianapolis. Guys, get your tickets tonight. Uh, or please do that. Get two, get four, bring people with you. Bring people that aren't saved. Uh, bring people that are interested in the, uh, the uh, things in the heavens shaking the earth, the seismic activity, New Madrid, 
uh, Cascadia Subduction Zone, all these things. Mike around the world will be speaking in that conference by phone, plus all the other speakers that will be there. It'll be amazing. Right now, I want to welcome all 4,137 of you that are with us live at our main YouTube channel. Over 14 or 1,500 of you with us live at the backup channel, plus Brock's telling me there's about 300 people over at New Live Stream, and there's folks everywhere uh, on all our social networks, and the thousands of you who are watching this by uh, archive, uh, uh, I want to welcome all of you to this broadcast. Mike around the world is with us. Mike, let's talk about, uh, we, we've just opened up, uh, we've reopened in Saudi Arabia, about 60 miles outside of the capital, uh, an air base there that we, we left 17 years ago. And we've put in a bunch of F-22, F-15 fighter jets, uh, a lot of new Patriot missile systems, and a lot, thousands of troops. So what's going on? And, and I'm hearing Russia, Turkey, Iran. I mean, can you tell us when you say 750,000 troops are converging on the Middle East, can you give us an idea what nations those are and why? Well, we have all the allied nations, of course, and uh, um, just about every mobile and, and able uh, army in the world is going to be found in that area. Well, I'd say, you, you know, everybody should be positioned there probably in another two months. They should be at uh, reasonable strength in the Middle East. We have, w with, it's a combination of factors here going on. Middle Eastern relationships, uh, just to give you some intel, these guys are talking to each other, right? Uh, they are talking, when I say Middle Eastern intelligence, I mean, uh, you have connections like uh, uh, Iran is talking through back channels with Jordan on occasion, and you have back channels with those two, with Russia and, and, and Turkey, and it's almost like it is so much chaos in these back channels, no one knows who they can trust, and, and it's getting bad, so the only way to be safe uh, because you don't know people's loyalties. We have Pakistan and Afghanistan and all these places, uh, these individuals that will, we know full well that if something goes forward, they will not side with the West. And that leaves Israel wide open. So we know something is happening and the chatter is too high. It, this is... This chatter has never taken place, best of all. There's never been a time, right, when the Middle Eastern world has begun to speak in back channels um, like they are. We're, we're talking about too many communications going from one spot to another. And then they voice nothing public to say that they're, you know, at odds with something or any of those things. And we know now when this begins to happen, messages are flying through third and fourth parties to coordinate. But to coordinate what? And because they're not doing it openly, you still have to maintain diplomacy. You still have to maintain that relationship based upon paper because you can't prove anybody's breaking anything. So in that case, what do you do? You have to build up your defense posture and your offensive posture. Uh, you have to be ready. Um, America, we're not dumb. We have fail-safes on everything, right? So do other countries. They have fail-safes on everything. So it's a, it's a very intricate and unstable thing happening. I mean, it's becoming unstable. If, if people's um, uh, emotional compromise is, is when they get angry, this visceral anger that's coming from people, if that's any indication of what's going on on a, more, on a greater coordinated uh, platform, and we have a real problem. The tensions are incredibly high. Mike, I mean, through normal talks, Pastor Paul, people could uh, talk and hash out things in a reasonable amount of time. You know what's happening now? People are getting up and turning their backs on each other and just walking away. Uh, that's not good. Um, through small things, tiny things, you've built tiny things. And, and now we have a lot of firepower sitting in the Middle East. Now, Pastor Paul, what happens? With all that firepower being bought to bear in the Middle East, right, setting up shop everywhere in the Middle East, what happens if somebody catches somebody else off guard and takes over their equipment? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if that equipment falls under the control of the wrong individuals, because we can't, there's some tricks you can fall for, right, and you have to watch for. In other words, what I'm saying is that you can plan 
not to fall for everything all your life. But it's always that one moment that always gets you. And right now we have a lot of equipment. We're training a lot of foreign troops to utilize that equipment, right? The, both defensive Patriot missile systems and so on, and offensive, right? They're, they're, they're being taught how to use these weapons platforms. What happens all of a sudden? In, in, in at a time nobody's ever thinking of that they decide all oh, right fellas we're going to put a plan forward let's go then we're going to be out machined basically right you have russia over there already right they're, they're there uh they have a naval base they have naval support and depending on whose side russia is on that could really cripple the entire western ideology and and that stability in the middle east which means israel would it's a hornet's nest but it would get ugly if israel has to react you know i always pray israel does not have to react i don't think that people understand what's in israel but anybody who touches israel is setting themselves up for failure i know what the bible says but israel can can wipe the entire middle east off the map right now if they wanted to wow and, um, are you that saying, would not what? be a good thing they really could that and, and you know thing. that and, and mike you can say that not only from a biblical standpoint just because of the scriptures and God's hand upon Israel and his ability to protect Israel. But part of the reason he can do it is the technological advancement that Israel has made along with the United States. And you know what Israel actually has there. Uh, and they, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be a mess if... if uh, and let me ask you a question. This chatter you're talking about, I'm listening very closely. Is this peace deal, the deal of the century, has this stoked something uh, in the heart and the minds of the Islamic world or I'm sure it has, sure it has. you got to remember something too and I'll, I'll give you two ideologies here because I understand people are some people are for or against and just let everybody know my position I'm not for or against things I look and I have to look at things without being biased against or for it I have to see it a different way but um, with this peace deal um, not going for the peace deal, right, satisfies Israel's enemies is what it does. And it emboldens them, right, to push forward their ideologies. To push a peace deal forward means that you have defaced all of Israel's enemies. And so that will unite them. Either way, they're going to be united, right? Either way, right. it doesn't matter. Either right. way, they're going to be way. united. That's right. But you're, you're in a situation where if, if, you, if you do something... Right? They're going to react. And if you don't do something, they're going to react. And so, in my humble opinion, it really didn't matter whether they uh, right. left it or, or initialized it. They were going to face the same thing. I think that's one thing that our White House has ignored for many years. It was always going to be a similar outcome. And, and they were told this by just about everybody. You cannot maintain peace by compromising principles and standards. That that's a no go, you know, and that's what that's what a lot of administrations did. They they compromised themselves and we suffer, Americans over here we suffer. We fall apart. Well, and we're compromising for somebody else. We can't do that. Um, but now you have an individual up there, right? Yeah, people don't like everything he does. But I'll tell you what, at least he's doing something, right? And um, But he put forth a, a plan. He's talking about this plan. And it broke up some of the, some that it made them, it, the power base that was over there, right? Their ideology, their rhetoric and everything else. What it did was it became an open demonstration to the people over there. That their governments with the big mouths and talk big words, but they can't stop, right? They can't stop what's going on. So President Trump, and he essentially called their bluff. He called day. their bluff. He did. He called their bluff. And uh, so now, if you call the bluff of a bunch of uh, thugs, what do they do? They go in the back channels and they begin to talk. And so this is what we see in the Middle East. Unfortunately, uh, yes, it's going to come with consequences. Yes, they are coordinating. And, um, you know, prophecy will be fulfilled. But um, you know, that's, what you see. that's what you see. And so the Western world knows this. So we, it's a situation where, where um, nobody can afford to slip up right now, right? Which is why you don't hear much reporting in the Middle East either. Because uh, another thing that, that can't be had is a bunch of people running into the Middle East trying to investigate what, what's happening here, what's happening here and happening here. So, um, yeah, there, there's almost like a media blackout on, on uh, 
certain movements that take place take place in the Middle East, and for good reason. Right? It's a, it's because a, it's very, it's very dangerous right now. It is, and and this is that was probably the best explanation of what is inevitable. Biblical prophecy is inevitable. Your point is very well taken that past administrations have, have done the appeasement of process. Starting back, I'll go back to Jimmy Carter, who was really the king of appeasement. And then it, it, you know him, you can hear Mike. And after Carter, Reagan tried to be stronger. Bush went back to uh, appeasement. It, it got worse with Clinton. George W. Bush stayed the appeasement route. It got even worse with Obama. And now Trump steps up and says, I can see, we can see what's coming. And we can sit here and play the same game. We're going to have the same outcome. Or we can just bring this to a head now and, 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 and build our military, call their bluff, and see if we can't back this thing down. Either way, if we can or we can, ultimately the confrontation's coming. So let's get it on. If you want to get it on, let's get it on. We're, we're ready. And let's not keep playing this stringed out game to the point that these guys all know how to operate the equipment and use the nukes and dirty bombs and whatever else they get their hands on. And I think that's what you're saying. Trump's trying. He doesn't want to see this, but he ultimately can see through the intel what is coming. And, and if you don't know anything about what's going on, guys, in, in uh, military strategic planning, just open your Bible. Because the Bible tells you exactly what is taking place, that the nations are gathering around Israel. Israel is being targeted, and there's even enemies among us uh, who have turned on Israel. There's, there's anti-Semitism that's gotten very ugly, unfortunately, and we pray every day that that doesn't happen. Uh, but it's, it's coming. And so, Mike, what I think I hear you saying is the reason that 750,000 troops are gathering. And I just read a report just now, 33 Turkish soldiers confirmed dead in Idlib in an airstrike as Erdogan chairs an emergency meeting. Um, I would think this is the Russians that did it, but Turkey says no, it was the Syrian military. So Syria keeps getting blamed for what I think Russia's doing, but maybe you can help me understand what's going on here. Well, they're, they're, Turkey's not going to, there, there are certain things that won't happen now, and you got to watch something. They have a, they have a tactic uh, for the public, for public consumption. And what they do is they will often tie up people's eyes, right, with what people want to see, right? They are masters at, at, at delivering exactly what a person wants to see, right? And it's just like if you go over there and somebody in the Middle East tries to sell you something, if you could understand every word they said, they would mystify you by the words and you'd end up buying something right they can present to you a rock and sell it to you for a thousand dollars and tell you something about it so they're good at presenting <laughs> yeah uh, they read people very well with, with the populace with a with a globe they normally they, they they excel at the fact that they can deliver a story that's very false right yep. but they can make it believable for months and it takes months to find out it never took place. So they're just masters at this, right? Look at the chemical warfare, the chemical usage over there when everybody says, hey, they use chemical weapons. No, they didn't. They, one of them was staged by their own people, right? Now listen to this, that, that, that Assad was using chemical weapons. Do you know who staged the first one? Assad did. Assad had his own people right states that they were that they were the enemy but they were hit by chemical weapons why did he do that well, who would do that but he knew what he was doing he knew how to confront any future blame that would ever come and sure enough he sent that to a spiral so and what happened to this to this very day has he paid a price for it no he's not no thank you thank you yeah right. and so they know exactly what they're doing they know they're masters at that and um so some of that stuff over there is is a type of uh, entertainment for our consumption for the western world's consumption while they're doing something else in the background it's very difficult to find out who is who to right you can have assad agents in jordan right now you can have them in israel you can have turkish uh, agents in iran you can have russian agents uh who are who are not they're they're actually russian but they look like middle easterns sitting at the palace in Saudi Arabia. It's just, it's, it's so mixed up over there, but once you begin to see all the components, 
you find out just how intricate this system is. And believe me, they have a plan. And ultimately, it's going to be the Western ideology that will be kicked out of there. They're going to try after Jerusalem, right? At the UN right now, they're already shuffling Jerusalem on paper. And President Trump is saying, nope, you can't do that. That's why he's ready to kick the UN out in the ocean somewhere, right? Because they can't shuffle uh, Jerusalem around like that. Especially, he made that declaration at the very time they were about to hand Jerusalem over. Do you know that? They were about yeah. to hand Jerusalem over. Yeah. And he made that declaration in a hurry. You know, that, that was rushed, right? Are you but saying he exactly what he was doing. who was getting ready to hand who was getting ready to hand Jerusalem over? Was it the United Nations? They had a conversation, they had a conversation at the UN and the United Nations had drafted a few papers. And what they were gonna do was to, to sell the Middle East is take Jerusalem under the hands of Israel. Wow. And Trump knew this was going on and said, oh, wait a minute, I'm just going to step up now and make this declaration. And, and, and he fulfilled Bible prophecy by doing that in Psalms 48, when it says, for Jerusalem shall be called the city of God, the city of the great king. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Paul Begley, Pastor Paul Begley, and Mike from around the world. Hope you guys like my new format of the streaming photos from my huge album. And um, if you don't know Jesus right now, you just bow your knee or bow your heart and say, God, I don't know you, but I believe Jesus is real. I believe he died on a cross. I believe he gave his life to get my sin destroyed, to forgive me of my sin, to abolish my sins. And I believe that he died and he rose from the dead. And I want to give my life to you, Jesus. I receive you now as Jesus and Lord. Change my life. Amen. That's it, guys. That's the prayer. Welcome to the kingdom. Let me know if you got saved. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. This has been fun. I hope you've seen some stuff in this video because there was a lot, a lot, 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 a lot of planets, a lot of old footage, a lot of new footage you've never seen. And I'll be doing this on all my videos, uh, or at least most of the long ones, where you're going to see my clips one way or the other. And then on Coffee TV, I'm working on the sound on that one again on my new computer, and I'll be doing just streaming live. So look for Coffee TV streaming live. And uh, we are in the last days, the end times. It's it's going to be a, a a rough ride, folks. Make sure you have food, food, water, toilet paper, toilet paper. Wake up, wake up. <laughs>